prophet Jeremiah was told to preach a message uh, to a people that would not listen, would not hear. And uh, of course, obviously, because of the condition of the uh, nation of Israel, and really being uh, the people that unfortunately had been uh, taken away at, at times in captivity, especially in the Old Testament, I'm always amazed at how God would raise up prophets to give them a message. And uh, you would think in a lot of circumstances that uh, people, if they're in a circum uh, circumstance, they would gladly repent, they would gladly do what's right. But unfortunately, Israel was a people that was a very hard-headed people. And in Jeremiah chapter 31, I want to call your attention, especially to verse 3 tonight, because that's what I'm going to deal with tonight. The Bible says, The Lord hath appeared unto, old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Let me read that again. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you for again for your love. Thank you for the singing tonight. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for praises. Father, each of us tonight can stand here all night and give praise and testimony to your goodness, your many blessings of life, for strength, for health, for the free gift of salvation for our families, for the protection you give us day in and day out on the road and at home and on our jobs through the week. And Father, we see your hand in our lives so many times through the day. And Father, I pray you, you'd make us more mindful. Make us more grateful. Lord, make us a grateful people because of what you're doing in our lives. Lord, I pray for this message tonight. Lord, I pray you would speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray for those tonight. Lord, many of our folks not here tonight, for whatever reason, Lord, I just pray wherever they are, Lord, you might just touch their bodies, encourage them. I pray that their, their time, even tonight, away from the house of the Lord, will be a time of Lord, reflection on thee. Lord, I pray for this week that you help us as we work, as we witness, as we, we toll in this life, in this world, in the green area, Lord, the Father, you would bring people across our path that need the gospel, that need an encouraging word. Lord, I pray for the Bible conference out of Bob Jones University. I pray for faculty, staff, and many thousands of students that you would uh, work in their hearts through the Word of God as it goes forth. Lord, I pray that students would be saved and students would be challenged and students would be uh, get back on fire for Thee and the faculty and staff. That, Lord, we would get our recharge of Thee and our, our fire in our lives to serve You in a greater way. Lord, bless Your Word tonight. Lord, we love You. We thank You for all that You've done. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. We won't take time to go through a lot of the uh, the historical aspect of this chapter because there's so much in there. But uh, have you ever really just considered how much it is that God loved mankind? When you think about what mankind has done, when I think about Adam and Eve, I think about the some of the Old Testament prophets, I think about the Tower of Babel, how the you know, a group of people said, hey, we're going to build a tower to heaven and we're going to, we're going to be as God. And, you know, there came a day where even Satan said, I will be as God. And, and the Lord had to uh, cast him out of eternal. And, you know, uh, when you think about it, uh, God loved us long before we even knew him. God loved us in our sin. God loved us when we, uh, before we were saved, when we, when we lied, when we cheated, when we stole, when we did all these things. God still loved us. In other words, there was never a time where God never loved man. Think about that a minute. There has never been a time where God never loved you as an individual. Why is that? It's an interesting thing. God's holy. Why should he love mankind? And I want to look at some things tonight because in, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 31, this verse really has struck me. Uh, 25, I think it's 25 years ago today, my youngest sister... I uh, was married, and during that uh, funeral, or funeral, that wedding ceremony, excuse me. Okay, if you hear this message, I really <laughs> struggle. Whoever had us to take, make sure you had it. That wedding was performed under a really uh, unusual circumstance. My dad was in the hospital. He had a heart attack a couple of days before. Uh, we went down. The, uh, church, the uh, service was going to be on Valentine's Day. And I remember walking our sister down with my brother, my dad in the hospital, basically on death's edge, and as it would be, the Lord would call him home two or three days later. Uh, I didn't really get to enjoy that wedding. It was a sweet wedding, a very sweet wedding, in spite of everything that went on. But I remember thinking about even that message, and this message that Jeremiah gives, 
Yet I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That was, that was a little over 25 years ago. That, that's been a long time. They say time heals a lot of things, but there's not a day goes by that I don't think about the love that parents have. Now, those of you tonight that are in here, you have parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I, you know, it's amazing. Man is unworthy. We're not worthy to receive God's blessing, but God chooses to make us worthy anyway. And I want to look at some things tonight about this verse. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. You know, God's love had no beginning. And I want to look at some things tonight because this word everlasting implies uh, unchangeability. Not able to change. And then he talks about this word here, loving kindness, that devotion, that mercy, that steadfast love. And God is saying through, through uh, Jeremiah, he says then in verse number two, Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went out to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared unto me, saying, Yea. The Lord is saying this through Jeremiah. Now, God's love had no beginning. I want you to hold your place here in Jeremiah. We'll come back there in just a moment. But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I was reading this uh, not long ago, and I, as I think about this verse, I, I, every time I read this verse, I'm still reminded of this. But God's love had no beginning. God never, there never was a time where God said, oh, I need to start loving man. God has always loved man. The Bible says in verse 26 of Genesis 1, and God said, let us, let us. That's God the Father, God's son, Christ was in creation. Notice that Messiah is right there in verse 26. A lot of times people say, well, uh, you know, Messiah is really not in the Old Testament. Well, how can you say that? He's all through the Old Testament. Let us make man in our image. Notice that. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. Notice this. So in other words, even before creation, God loved us. Matter of fact, you don't have to turn there. But over in the book of John, there's a tremendous verse in John 17. And we've, we've heard this so many times. In John 17, verse 24. Let me find it. I don't want to misquote it. He says, Father, John 17, verse 24. Father, I pray that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of of the world. Notice that. Even before the foundation of the world, God already loved us. That's amazing to me. And I tell you what, when you when you look around, I know we go out and we, you know, we go out in restaurants and you just go through your daily life. It is amazing the things that you see where Satan is trying so hard to just wrap everybody around his finger. Now I recognize those of you that are saved tonight by the grace of God. You can't be demon possessed. You can't be influenced. But you know what? Satan has a way of trying to discourage the Christian. He really does. Uh, you know, he can't take you to hell tonight, but he can discourage you. He can cause things in your life to cause discour discouragement. But, uh, you know, most things, uh, there are always beginnings. Uh, for those of you that were married tonight, uh, there was a beginning. What do you mean? Well, there was a time where uh, you and her met, however it was, wherever it was, and maybe it was just a hello, or maybe it was a hello, you know, who are you? I'm so-and-so. And over time, things happen, and then the marriage takes place. There was a beginning. But in God's case, there was no beginning as far as His love toward us. Think about that. Love toward man. Now, God's love had no beginning. But something else here tonight, God's love never ceases. It's never interrupted. I love that. You know, playing sports, and those of you that play sports, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are times when you're so thankful when the buzzer sounded or the referee comes over and he says, time out. Time out on this team. Because why? That's where you went and you got the oxygen and you're about to die. You thought you were about to have a heart attack and you were so thankful. He called time out. God never calls time out. God never has to call a timeout because His love never ceases. 
In Romans chapter 8, I want you to see this tonight. Romans chapter 8, what a tremendous book. The book of Romans and especially chapter 8. And one day, Lord willing, we'll get through the book of Romans. I, I'd love to go through that. What a tremendous book. And that is Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 35. The Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He's asking a question. Shall our tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. See, this is a divine power here. Paul says, I am persuaded. I am thoroughly convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, principalities, powers, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in other words, there is an inseparable power there of the love that we have. Jeremiah said, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. A love that has no measure. You cannot measure God's love. It had no beginning. It will never cease. It goes on forever. You know, we think about, we, we, we talked about the Jonah the other week in the fish's belly. God's love didn't stop there. You think about the three Hebrew children. I know back when we had our fake BBS and had the uh, acting out the Daniel and the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. You know, even in that fiery furnace, you think about that. God's love never ceases there. It goes on Bible story, Bible lesson. And every day that you live, Christian, it, it's a testimony to God's love. We sing some songs today. Maybe we didn't sing all of these. Amazing grace. Jesus loves even me. My Savior's love. Uh, uh, the love of God and, and some of me that were sung today. All these hymns that portray the love of God. And every time you sing these songs, uh, I hope that you're singing them in a sense like, wow, that's, that's God's love for me. That's me personally. You need to learn to personalize hymns. What do you mean by that? That means when you sing a hymn, you need to be singing that like, that's between me and God. Because well, you know why? Because it already really is. That's a hymn. You need to personalize that. God's love will never cease. It never stops. And he says there, nothing, all these things are going to be able to separate us from the love of God. Have you ever tried to take something, maybe a piece of paper or maybe a whatever it was, and you, you tried to, maybe you, or maybe even a piece of fabric for some of you ladies, and you stained it with something, probably your husband got something on it, you know, and you tried to get it clean, and I mean, maybe you washed it 14 times in Clorox bleach or whatever, and you pulled out, and you just knew in your heart, oh, this is going to come, and it just, it just would not come clean. It's amazing. You think about that. Uh, you know, when I think about cleanness, he said, in other words, you want to separate that dirt from that fabric. I know grow up in, in Thomasville, Georgia, there's a lot of red clay. I used to play baseball, and I know my mom, bless her heart, she, she, just, she tried. I know she tried. But you'd slide into second or third base, and man, your, your baseball socks would get in that clay, and it was like it was all over. I mean, it was no more. Wear a nice pair of socks out there, and at the end of the night, it was like, it's all, you might as well just throw them in the garden. You wasn't going to get it out. You could wash it. You could bleach it. You could just soak it for two or three days, and it was just like it just would not come clean. It was amazing. Now, most people, uh, when they play ball, they, they, they want it a little dirty anyway because it kind of looks like, well, you know, I've kind of been in action. You don't want clean. I remember wearing brand new tennis shoes. I, I, there was something about, I didn't like brand new tennis shoes. Of course, your kids at school, they'd come and step on just because they, they, they were mad at you because you got new ones and they wanted, they wanted they'd step on so they'd make a mark on them. Now, I know none of you never had that problem. But that, that was the age I grew up in. But isn't it amazing? We like things clean. Folks, God's love will never cease. And Paul says, there, look, you can't separate it. Just as you ladies try to separate the, the grease, the dirt from clothes or whatever, you can't do it. It's, 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 it's in the fabric. And God says, you know, all these things, will, you can't separate it. That's divine power. But something else I want you to see tonight, back in Jeremiah chapter 31, what a tremendous statement he says here. God's love will not only, it has no beginning, and it will never cease, but thank God it will never end. He says, I have loved thee. Hey, that's personal, folks. Draw a line and put your name there. That means you. Each individual person, the Lord said, yea, 
I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That's God's love. That is a divine love that man can't duplicate. Now, man has tried to duplicate a lot of things, and he has. You know, it's amazing to me nowadays that we have a, a synthetic oil. You can go to advance, and you can, instead of getting what they call the real stuff, the good stuff, you can you can get the real good stuff now. You get synthetic. It's going to cost you probably a few dollars more, but they say it's just as just like a regular motor oil. It's just as good. It doesn't heat the engine as much, and, and you know you, you can go longer between oil and time. It's, it's man-made. And they've duplicated a lot of things a lot, but you know there's a lot of things you can't duplicate. One of them is the love of God. We sang that song a while ago. And I met Brother Kurt saying this morning, the love of God, <clears throat> page 188 in the handbook, we'll see there. We'll look at that in just a moment. But you know, every time I hear that song, the love of God, what does that really mean to you tonight, Christian? That ought to mean, hey, God loves me. In fact, Ken read the verse this morning or tonight from John chapter 316. Matter of fact, let's just go there right fast because that's where we're going next anyway. In John 316, a lot of times we, we read these verses and oh, praise God. I know these verses. I've memorized them all my life, and I've heard them so many times, and, and I could probably say them in my sleep. Yes, we can. But I'm afraid sometimes the familiarity of things, unfortunately, we, we, don't always, uh, we don't always respond to things. John chapter 3, verse number 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means anyone, man, boy, girl, anybody, believeth in him, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is no condemned, or not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now he goes through that, and he talks about down in verse 30 about the truth and coming to the light, and all these things are made known by God. However, the truth is clear. And when we think about this tonight, this is God's law. What if God would have just said, you know what, man is sinful, man is apostate, man is, man is just filthy vile. Why should I send my son? Why should I send my only begotten son down to earth to die? To let him die for all of that. That's the love of God, folks. And I trust as you go through your daily lives, and sometimes things are going to happen in your life. Maybe somebody's going to say unkind things to you. And you know, sometimes it's so easy to just in the flesh retaliate, you know, load, our, load, up, our, load up our mouths and our, our, our venom and you know, spew it back at them. But lots of times, you know you what? You just smile. You just smile at them and say, God bless you. Now, that's generally not the response we, we want to do. It's like when you guys are hammering the shingles and you hit your, your nail. Well, praise the Lord. I've never said that. I've tried to sometimes. I'm usually going, ah, you know, I'm screaming and my blood, my, my thumb is bleeding and, you know, it just hurts. I mean, it just, you know, you don't get a lot of a, you don't get a lot of satisfaction when somebody says, "Are you okay?" No, I'm not okay. Did you not just hear me scream? And they'll say, well, "Let me go get your other thumb over here," and you won't even feel this. This that's so true. Hey, it's amazing the pain that comes through us. But God says, "Look, all these things are happening." John three sixteen said, "God gave. He gave us something. He gave us the greatest gift." And today, so many people they want that gift. They say, "No, nah. they want to. They want to go to heaven." They want, the, they want the benefits of, of glory, so to speak, but they don't want to trust Him. Why don't you want to trust God tonight? Why wouldn't anybody want to trust Christ tonight? You know, if you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, then why aren't you a Christian? You know what's right. You know what the Bible teaches. I tell you what, many years ago I had a, had a parent come in and was a youth pastor, and I knew, I knew they already knew what the Bible said. It was very clear what the Bible said, and they were trying to uh, you know, had a situation going on with their, their teenage son and they were trying their best just to, for whatever reason, I guess they want me to, to say, well, it's, it's, you know, the Bible says this, but for your son, that's an exception. No, you know, you're not the exception in life. We all go the same way. And you know, the Bible says we all come the same way to heaven. I sure we not long ago. How I, I told I got not long ago. I said, well, you, you Baptists are going up the mountain this way and you, we, we're going to meet at the top. Well, I don't know about that. Not according to the Bible. Not according to the Bible. God so loved us. That word of God, that highest sacrificial love. He was beloved. 
That was God's beloved son. And God said, he must die. He must die for the sins of mankind because I love people so much. I love man so much. Hey, before the foundation of the world, God, God loved us. All through life, he loved. His love is never going to cease. Now, if you will, take your hymn book. And I have a hymn book somewhere. Somebody got it. 188. I just want to share this verse or two with you in closing tonight. And I think about this song, these hymns. A lot of times when I'm, when I'm picking out hymns and as I'm preparing messages, uh, and I, had a, I had an old preacher say many years ago, there's three books you ought to have when you're doing Bible for preparation. You ought to have your Bible. You ought to have a strong concordance. You ought to have an old-fashioned hymn book. And I know what they're saying because there's so much theology in there. But I want you to look at this last verse again. Brother Kerr brought it out this morning. But I want to bring it out again tonight. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill? And every scribe a man, every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Think about that. You've been down the ocean? You know, anytime I've ever been in the ocean, not the beach, the coast. We, 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 Baptist, we, we go to the coast, we don't go to the beach. Uh, we go down and you stand there and you, you, I mean, as far as you look, it's just water. And as far as you look, there's water. Hey, you ever been on a boat several miles out? I mean, many miles out from coast? You ever go deep sea fishing? You, you get out there somewhere, you can almost see, you can almost see the curvature. And I, that's getting on out there. But it is an amazing sight. A beautiful sight. And God says, if we wrote all the things about the love of God, it'd drain all that dry. That's amazing to me. Nor could the scroll contain the whole those scripts from sky to sky, O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure. The saints and angels song. Hey, there's one, there are certain things in life that are going to endure forever. And according to that song, according to the word of God, it is the love of God. I love that. The love of God, verse 1, is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star. It reaches to the lowest <laughs> hell. How about that? The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Every time you sing that song, you ought to sing that song. Praise God, that's talking to me. That's what you ought to think. You know, I think about unsaved people when they're in a service or, or whatever, and they maybe they hear a song. They hear certain hymns. I often wonder how they how they respond to that. I really do. Miss God, I, I thought about the other, other Sunday when we were at the funeral service. When, when people sing songs, I, I think about these people that work in the funeral home business. They, they go in a lot of churches. They go in a lot of different kinds of churches. But I guarantee you, they hear the gospel. Now, they, may hear, they may hear a watered-down gospel here and there, but I know some places they hear the gospel. They were, if they were down there Sunday, last Sunday, amen, they got a good dose of the gospel. Well, that pastor, uh, he went through Psalms 23, and man, I'll tell you what, he, he put the gospel on, in between every verse. Praise God for that. That's what they did. And I thought about that. They hear that so many times, and I thought, do they get, do they get cold to it? I often wonder about that. But you know what? A lot of Christians, if we're not careful, we come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Thursday night, week in, week out, Sunday school, and if we're not careful... The love of God, that theme will. Jeremiah said, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. That love can never change. And he also says something else there in Jeremiah, that last part of that verse. Not only have I loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. If you will, look down at uh, verse uh, 32, verse 18. Just go to one, one, uh, one pass there. Uh, 32 verse 18. He says, I have surely heard thee from bemoaning myself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as the bullock, unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Folks, I'm telling you something. There is a loving kindness tonight where God says, Because I am a loving kindness, God, a loving God, I'm going to draw you unto myself. We go to John 3, we go to John chapter 15, we go several places tonight. But you know what? God only not only loves us tonight with an everlasting, a love that went way before the foundation of the world, but a loving kindness. God didn't have to do that. I wonder why God did that. I wonder why God chooses to love us. Well, He loves, He ought to love us because of who we are. Yeah, I know He does. 
He loved, you know, if it wasn't for, for that love, we'd be, all be on our way to hell tonight. But no, God loves us. He loved us before the foundation of the world. He loved us in a time before we were saved, when we were sick in our sin, we were sick in our sin. We lied, we cheated, we did all these things out of this old world. And that's why once we get saved by the grace of God, that's why we need to have a change of heart, a change of action, a change of conversation or lifestyle. Uh, when you hear the word of a conversation about it, it usually refers to a, a, a lifestyle, not necessarily your speech. But hey, a Christian needs to talk different. We need to act different. Hey, when God saves you, hey, I'll tell you what, I, I thought about the evening this afternoon. 25 years ago, we were at Faith Baptist Church in Thompson, Georgia for a wedding. And you know what? I'm so thankful that 25 years later, a lot of those truths that I heard as a teenager sitting in that pew week in and week out, you know, they are as fresh tonight as they were right back then. I can still hear, I can still see my pastor. I can still see my pastor coming down and jumping up on the first pew. And if you knew my pastor, you'd understand what I'm saying. He'd jump on that front pew and he'd tell some of you parents tonight, if you don't get a hold of your young people, oh, you know, he'd, he'd just keep going. He'd, he'd just come back up. He'd, he'd keep going. And first thing, he'd come down here and he'd jump up there. And if you were sitting on the front row, you was in a bad spot. Usually you didn't sit on the front row, but you, you, he, everybody, you saw the, you know, the clear, your clear lane there. Here he come. That man was crazy. I don't know. No, he wasn't. You know what? He loved young people. He loved to preach the word of God. I, I remember the first time our family visited, that happened. And I remember going home, my dad said, what do you think about that? To my mom. And my mom said, I think we need to go back and visit again. And I remember thinking, whoa, are you serious? But you know what? I've come to, I've come to love a man like that because that man, week in and week out, he taught me that blessed book. And I'm convinced tonight, one reason I'm here tonight, and I, I believe this, because I had an old-fashioned pastor that wasn't scared to preach that blessed book. You young people tonight, I, challenge, I, I pray that down the road, down the road, you look back and you say, Pastor Joy, Willis, thank God. He didn't entertain us. He preached the Word of God. When I was a youth pastor, when after we left there, and some, somebody come to, to us and said, well, all, all Brother Joy did was preach to us. And I said, praise God. What a compliment. I didn't entertain you. I didn't, and we, had all, we did all kind of crazy things. We really did. We did a bunch of crazy stuff in the youth group. But thank God. You know what they said? He, all he ever did was preach to us. Guilty. Guilty. That's all I can say. Hey, this book will change your life, folks. The love of God. Jeremiah said, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. Hey, I don't care what you're going through tonight, what you'll go through <laughs> next week or 10 weeks from now. Remember that thought. God, you've loved me with an everlasting love. And you're not going to let me go. You love me with a loving kindness. And you're going to help me in every situation. And if you'll remind, if you'll remind yourself of those two things, you know, I don't care what situation comes in your life. Everything's coming in my life all the time. And I said, Lord, thank you for that promise. What a promise. Love, I'm your, Lord, I'm yours. This is your situation. This is your problem. You take care of it. You deal with it. You take care of it. You say, Pastor, you pray. Yes, I do. You know what? It's amazing. It's amazing how God has done some of that. I'm amazed. And sometimes I look back and say, Lord, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way. Maybe I shouldn't have followed, toned it that way. And the Lord is saying, it's okay. I've already taken care of it. It's amazing, folks. If we will just, and I've said it so many times, if we will just get out of the way and let God work in our lives, He wants to work in our lives. He wants to, he wants to do things to your life, your family, you as an individual. And if you'll just get out of the way and let Him go, I guarantee you, you'll see changes. You'll see the, 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 the richness of the Christian life. And people around you will say, man, what's What's going on with that guy? What's wrong with her? Man, she's different today. He's different. Let me tell you what's different about you. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only good thing, good within you tonight. Think about that. Let's, let's stand tonight. We dismiss in prayer. I'm just going to have my wife come play a verse of invitation on Psalm 250.